Psalm 11.3 says, If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? I'm standing here in a sea of white markers. They all are symbolism of past. These are men and women who died, or the wife of a soldier who died. I've done many services in the National Cemetery, but as we look upon all of these markers, they're patriots. What is a patriot? Well, most patriots from the old days died, and they died for a cause. Uh, they were patriotic. Simply means they lived and fought and died for a cause. And as we look and see all of these markers, we're reminded of freedom. And we're reminded of what price freedom really comes. And if the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? The first thing the righteous can do when our foundations are taken out from under us is to find truth and hold it. These soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines believed in a cause. They had to fight for that cause and they lost their lives. Many are buried at sea. Many are buried in foreign countries for that same cause. Today the cause is muddled or weakened through a, a glass that seems more half empty than half full in many people's eyes. We've lost the sight of patriotism and we've lost the price of what it cost to maintain freedom. In fact, many young people are talking about the concept and the idea of doing away with such things as freedom or uh, an amendment that says there is such a thing as free speech because they're afraid of it. We've lost the ability to debate in public forum. So as we lose these freedoms, it's important to go back to our past and to see what Robert Emmons Robertson from Pennsylvania, who was in the five uh, battery AAA battalion in Korea who died. What he was as a patriot, who he was as a patriot, and what it cost to maintain freedom. If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? One, hold on to truth, find truth. The Word of God tells us that Jesus gave us truth and he gave it to us to set us free, not to entangle us or not to put us in bondage. Sometimes people mention to me uh, you should never be political. A, a pastor should never be political. The whole world has been politicized. We have no choice now because our government is even saying you really can't trust the truth of the Bible. You trust the truth of what we tell you. In other words, if a boy says he may not be a boy, he's a girl, I want to go to the girls' sports. Now with the signing of a president's pen, he can go into a girls' locker room. It's going to absolutely destroy girls athletics and I thought this whole culture was about freeing women to be who they want to be and it was wiped away with the one one signing of the pen these are freedoms they're not Christian freedoms they're American freedoms the whole point of Jesus setting us free was not so that we can be in some sort of a bondage uh, to a government for freedom must be vigilantly fought for and maintained so while Churches may be criticized for now you're being political. You could lose your 501c3 standing with the government. If that be so, then that be so. We have to stand on truth because truth is truth. Regardless if the government or your city council or the school board accepts it or receives it, truth is truth. These men and women died in a truth. They believed this country was unique. They answered a call. They gave their life's blood. They're patriots. We make too light of a, of a word like patriot when we call each other heroes for doing something little things. These are true heroes who gave life's blood, who gave uh, of their own freedom so that we may have an amendment that says we can talk where we want and how we want and who to what we want. That's freedom. So if the foundation be destroyed, the first thing that a group of people, a mass of people, a nation has to do is what is truth? Jesus said that truth, it sets you free. And when he died upon the cross, he initiated that freedom. And upon his resurrection, three days later, that freedom became a reality that we can be free in Christ. He told the Galatians, don't get entangled again in that bondage that you are in. So truth is just not for Christians or a church idea or a spiritual question. It's for school. It's for life. It's for navigating every portion of life because truth is truth. It's moral. It's absolute. It can't be made up based on how I think. 
So if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? They can hold on to the truth. They can speak truth and they can demand truth from their political representatives. They can demand truth from those who are in authority. The scripture very plainly says to us that we are to pray for those in authority. That's true. And the Old Testament prophets prayed for the, for the king, but they also confronted the king and they told him what the word of the Lord said. I hope that you enjoy the freedoms that was given to you by so many patriots. For there is a patriotic cause today. And I hope that you see that and see how vigilant freedom must remain.